For Crema Media's Polity, I am Shannon DeRejo. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me to discuss the issue around Omar al-Bashir and South Africa's international obligations. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Do you think that your article gave sufficient weight to the objections that African states have to the ICC's alleged targeting of African heads of state as accused? Yeah. Uh, if I didn't, uh, I would like to state now that I do believe that they, uh, if you are a friend of the United States, you are unlikely to find yourself accused, even though the United States is not even a party to the International Criminal Court. And luckily, I read the newspapers today, and there's something in there that's important. It reminds me that they used to say, when Moses Cortane got to his office and there were people waiting to see him, mm -hmm. he would say, wait, and he'd first go and look at the newspaper front uh, page because he thought, maybe this person is coming to see me about this issue. Now, luckily, I saw something. Uh, today, a Rwandan intelligence, the head of Rwandan intelligence was arrested in, I think it was the UK, one of these places, and he was sent off to Spain for trial for war crimes. So hmm. uh, it does illustrate the double standards, the fact that um, the uh, people who find themselves as accused tend to come from Africa. Now, on the other hand, we must remember that the complaints also come from Africa. So that hmm. um, the complainants are people who have experienced these various war crimes in various states of Africa that have led to the charging of people. And in the case of al-Bashir, the prosecutors at the states who uh, initiated the prosecution were Ghana, Latvia, and some state from the third world. I can't remember what the third state was. So it's hardly the, the Western major states mm. who initiated the charges. Nevertheless, I do think it is valid that uh, the way the ICC has been working has unfortunately led to individuals being charged and others evading justice. Now, that doesn't entitle South Africa to simply do what it likes. Mm because South Africa took the decision, it was actually one of those who initiated the ICC, and it took the decision not only to ratify the treaty, which some other African states have done, but to incorporate it into South African law. And a few years ago, um, there was an inquiry as to what South Africa would do if Bashir came into South Africa, and they did say they would arrest him. And if South Africa now is unhappy with the ICC, it has to follow procedures in getting out of it. Mm. Because if you enter a treaty, you can't just simply uh, decide to evade your obligations under the treaty. And instead of removing the legislation, and notifying the appropriate bodies that they no longer uh, wish to be parties to the treaty, they decided to undermine it. Mm -hmm. They decided to um, undermine a court order saying that Bashir should not be allowed to leave, leave the country. I see today they are denying this, but I mean, you can't leave from Waterkloof Air Base without government knowledge. Mm. So it seems very hard to believe that there was not connivance in the departure of Bashir, that he was not given assurances that he would be given safe passage out of South Africa, as Mugabe in fact indicated to be the case. And it'll be very hard for them to indicate, uh, to, to show that they did not connive in this. So it has a problem beyond this case, because if you get a reputation that you will simply flout treaties, which you have signed, ratified, made part of your domestic law, 
you become something of a rogue state because one day it's Bashir, next day it's something else, and people don't know whether they can trust you. So I, don't, I think it is correct that there are double standards that Netanyahu, uh, Blair, and a whole lot of others will never face trial, or unlikely to face trial, uh, but there were ways of dealing with this which ought to have been done by a law-abiding state. Mm -hmm. Now, you relate respect for law in South Africa to defending freedom. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Now, when they um, showed contempt for what a court of law decided, they were not doing something which was perfectly justifiable under the apartheid regime. Under the apartheid regime, I myself broke the law. I didn't have respect for the law. I spent devoted a lot of my life to undermining that law because that was a law of a government that was denying the rights of the majority of the population, mm. which was trampling on their dignity, which was making people homeless, removing their land, and so forth. Now, law then embodied oppression, mm -hmm. even though some judges did what they could to mitigate this, and some advocates did what they could. Now, the law that we have today is a, a law that embodies rights to freedom of, the, of all South Africans. Mm. And when you undermine the law, you are also undermining our freedom. Now, I'm not saying that freedom and law are the same, mm. because law is really a series of regulations which safeguard certain liberties and set limits on what you can do and what you can't do and what people can do to you. Mm. So it is a defense of your freedom, but freedom is wider in the sense that it contains uh, aspirations of people uh, which may not yet be part of the law. But if we understand freedom as ever-changing, ever-developing, as we imagine more and understand more, it will obviously go beyond what we have in the legal system today. Mm -hmm. For example, in regard to protecting gender sexuality rights, in regard to environmentalism, quite a few things uh, may enhance, uh, could conceivably uh, enhance our freedom. Nevertheless, um, we need to understand that this legal system that we have now, this constitution that we have now, is the result of a hard-won freedom for which very many people died. And when one simply uh, is contemptuous of a court decision, what you are also being is contemptuous of the freedom that we have won. Thank you very much, Raymond. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Crema Media's Polity about South Africa's international obligations.